Hello, I'm Beverly Lucas, director of Cedar Hill Cemetery Foundation. Usually during the warmer months, the Foundation offers a variety of programs and guided walks which are greatly enjoyed by the public, but 2020 is not a typical summer. Although disheartening to cancel activities, the Foundation has turned to video and other forms of media to provide some of the content usually shared during our on-site programs. In today's video, I will introduce you to a few of the notable residents of Cedar Hill. A Hartford dentist, Horace Wells, discovered the use of nitrous oxide as an anesthetic. Wells, who died at age 33, was posthumously recognized for his achievement. Originally buried in Hartford's Old Norse Cemetery, in 1908, Wells' son Charles had his parents disinterred from Old North and reinterred at Cedar Hill. He commissioned sculptor Lewis Potter to create a fitting memorial to his father. Gideon Wells earned a degree from Norwich University and became a lawyer by reading the law. In 1826, he founded the Hartford Times, serving as the newspaper's editor. Wells started his political career as a Democrat and served in the Connecticut State Legislature from 1827 until 1835. In 1854, he joined the newly established Republican Party and founded the Hartford Evening Post in 1856. An avid supporter of Abraham Lincoln, the president appointed him Secretary of the Navy. Griffin Stedman graduated from Trinity College and began studying the law in Philadelphia shortly thereafter. Following the attack at Fort Sumter, he returned to Connecticut and was appointed a captain in the 5th Regiment of Connecticut Volunteers. He quickly moved up the ranks to colonel and became commander of the 11th Connecticut Volunteer Infantry. During a skirmish after the Second Battle at Petersburg, Stedman was mortally wounded. He lay dying for 24 hours and it was during this time that he was promoted to the rank of general. Stedman died on August 6, 1864 at the age of 26. In 1856, Elizabeth Hart Jarvis married Samuel Colt, the inventor of the Colt revolver. At his death in 1862, Elizabeth became one of the richest women in the country, having inherited an industrial empire. Elizabeth helped manage Colt's patent firearms manufacturing company from behind the scenes. When the armory burned to the ground in 1864, it was Elizabeth who insured the building beforehand and managed its reconstruction, including making it fireproof. Elizabeth was also a prominent philanthropist and patron of the arts. Born in Hartford, John Pierpont Morgan began his career as an apprentice banker in New York. Ultimately, he became the most powerful American banker of his time, helping to forge the credit bridge between Europe and the United States and financially rescuing the United States government twice. In 1913, Morgan died in his sleep at the age of 76. Nearly 4,000 condolence letters were received overnight at the Grand Hotel in Rome, where he died. His body was taken by train to Paris and then to New York by boat. A memorial service was held in New York before he was brought by private train to Hartford, where he was laid to rest. Following her college graduation, Katherine Hepburn pursued an acting career on stage and screen. Working in Hollywood, her off-screen behavior hindered her initial success. Labeled box office poison, Catherine headed to Broadway to star in The Philadelphia Story in 1938, for which she received critical acclaim. She purchased the film rights and returned to Hollywood, where she chose her director and co-stars for the film version of the play. The movie was a box office hit and revived her career. Catherine acted in more than 50 movies and 10 Broadway productions. She still holds the record for the most Best Actress Oscar wins with four. Born in southern China, Young Wing attended missionary schools before coming to the United States. After attending Munson Academy, he studied at Yale, graduating in 1854. He was the first Chinese student to graduate from an American university. Young returned to China, where he wrote a plan for Chinese students to be educated in the U.S. He was appointed Deputy Commissioner of the Chinese Educational Commission, and in 1872, the first group of Chinese students arrived in the U.S. Nine years later, in 1881, the Chinese government ended the program and recalled its students. While the program closed sooner than anticipated, it is credited with providing China with leaders in the fields of engineering, diplomacy, sciences, and academia. Young, who married Mary Kellogg in 1875, continued to work to improve relations between China and the U.S. for the remainder of his life. He died in Hartford in 1912. 
There are many fascinating people to meet at Cedar Hill. I look forward to sharing more stories with you soon. Don't forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel to see the latest videos.